Hi, I'm Gareth Evans. I'm a retired physics teacher, a pastor, a missionary, and itinerant for many years, traveling and speaking at youth conferences and pastors' conferences in many parts of the world. As I look back over my long life, I see so many stepping stones where God placed before me to direct me into walking into his will. I never saw them ahead of me, but I see many, many of them as I look back. And I'd like to share some of those stepping stones with you. Join me on this journey as I tell some of my stories. God bless you. This is my next story in the series Stepping Stones. In number two, I told you about my time I went to Swansea and I met Don Evans, the one person I knew in a city of 140,000. Today I'm going to tell you a story about meeting a man in the middle of a city of four million. In my teaching, I think it was number three or so, when I was in Germany, I told you about a time when I was given a job or appointed to a position in Toronto at Danforth Technical College. And how about that fell through because uh, two people had been appointed for the same position. Oh, I was very angry, very disappointed, embarrassed. And it was a stepping stone into something I'm going to tell you about today. I arrived in Canada, in Toronto, in 1975 to teach at Toronto French School. After a little while there, I realized that it was not the sort of place that I really had anticipated coming to. And I found that our salary was very low. And for our first two years in Germany, my wife and I and our three little girls really struggled financially. But at the end of my first year, I decided I needed to get into the Canadian education system. I was in a private school. And I, to, to teach in a Canadian school, I needed to get, first of all, what is called a letter of standing. Any person who immigrates to Canada, whether they be a teacher, an electrician, a plumber, whatever it might be, they need a letter of standing to say what their British credentials are worth in Canada. And I needed to get this in order to apply, to be interviewed, to get my Type B certificate to teach in a Canadian school. So I said to my colleagues in the French school, I said, tell me, where does one go to get a letter of standing? And nobody knew. And uh, I said, well, I remember 10 years ago, right into a place on Bloor Street. Now, Bloor Street's the east-west street right through to the city of Toronto. And I wrote to somewhere there concerning my credentials when I applied to Danforth Technical College. At that time, I was greatly disappointed. And somebody said, well, the education department of the university is on Blue Street. I said, it must be there. I need to go. So after school that day, I went downtown Toronto and I found the education department. And I walked into the door and there was a corridor going both ways and they were dark. This was like half past four in the afternoon. There was obviously in next to nobody there but as I'm about to turn to go out the door at the far end of the corridor opened and an old man starts coming out and there's a young man holding the door for him it's obviously the young man's office and the young man says to him well bye sir I'll see you next week and the old man says yes thank you John nice to have coffee with you and, and I walk toward them to ask them where do I go to get a letter of standing the young man said, can I help you? And I told him, and he said, well, you need to go down to the Mowat block on Bay Street, a few blocks away. Then the old man said, why do you come here? And I said, well, um, 10 years ago, I wrote an office on Bloor Street considering my credentials when I was applying for a teaching post here. Oh, he said, maybe you wrote to my office. Let's go and see. And with that, he takes my arm and we walk up the corridor and he's an old man, he's fragile and I can't pull away. And of course, I'm polite anyway, so I, I'm humoring him. We come out of the doors and we go across the five or six lanes of Bloor Street, very, very busy thoroughfare. And I'm doing this to the traffic and he walks across to the building right opposite, up the steps, past the commissar, into his own inner office, the inner sanctum. He says, sit down there, young man, sit down there. Well, of course, I want to get to Bay Street. I don't want to be here. I want to go to Bay Street. And so he went out of the room. He talked about my, what my name is. He went out of the room and within one minute... He came back in with my letter of 10 years before. He said, you need to go down to Bay, to Mowat Block on Bay Street. And when you go, he said, ask for Don Anderson and give him this. And he scribbled on a piece of paper. So I raced out of the building and I'm running down to the Mowat Block on Bay Street. And I'm looking at this piece of paper and said, dear Don, look after Mr. Evans for me. It appears he's eligible for a type A certificate in physics. Signed, Professor Carlisle. Chief Education Officer Toronto. This was the man 
would jit me out of a job 10 years before because he had appointed somebody to the position where the principal had already appointed me. It's in a city of 4 million people. And God took me right to that man. And think about this. I was in the wrong building at the wrong time. If I'd been there one minute or five minutes earlier, he would still be drinking his coffee. If I'd been there five minutes later, he would have already left. But I came just as he's leaving the door of the wrong building. And this was the man who gave me his piece of paper. This was stepping so you're going to see great things that happened from that. I went into the moat block and I went into the front door just about its closing time. I go up to the third floor, whatever it is, and I go in and there's this 50 foot of counter space with two or three people standing at each location, plumbers, nurses, uh, electricians, teachers, all waiting to get a letter of standing. I'm standing, I think, my goodness, I'm going to be here all night. And a man comes out of the washroom beside me and he bumps into me in his way and I say, oh, I'm sorry, and he apologizes. And he said, can I help you? I said, I'm looking for Don Anderson. He said, well, I'm Don Anderson. So I gave him the paper and he said, come with me, Mr. Evans. He took me into his own private office. His secretary's name was Megan from Cardiff, Wales, my home city. He said, Megan, look after Mr. Evans for me. I walked out of there 15 minutes later with my, my letter of standing. One day in my classroom, a man comes in and he sits in the back seat. Now, in the Toronto French school, parents will want to do this. And they would criticize the teachers. And sometimes teachers would be sent back to France. They're all young people from France. Well, I've been around teaching too long for that. So when this man came in, I stopped my class. And I went up to him and I said, excuse me, sir, what are you doing here? With every intention of asking politely to leave. He said, well, I'm a magistrate inspector of schools, Mr. Evans. I said, well, I, with due respect, sir, I'm not going to teach you. Normal courtesy and inspectors inform teachers when they come in. Oh, he said, I have come to check you. He said, I've come to look at the curriculum to make sure the private school is teaching the Ontario curriculum. So I showed him the books and we talked and he was a Scotsman, I remember that. He said, Mr. Evans, have you got your Type B certificate yet, which is your, your certificate required to teach in the public schools of Canada? I said, no, not yet. Oh, he said, look, he said, it's obviously a very competent teacher. I'll send it to you as soon as I get back to the office. I said, oh, thank you, sir. Wonderful. Another stepping stone. A little by, while later, I still hadn't received it from him. And I see an advertisement in the press that the University of Toronto of a six-week summer school this coming summer for physicists who want to get their type A diploma, which is the top qualification. The Ontario government was now requiring all heads of departments to have this type A additional certificate over the type B. And most teachers did not have it. But this course was going to be a six-week course. And I thought, I thought, I'm, I'm eligible for that. I'd like to do that. So I wrote off for the application. I got them all and uh, got all my papers together, my credentials together, my certification together. But all I did not have was my Type B certificate. So on the deadline date, I telephoned the university physics department and I said to the young lady, I said, I'm, I'm very interested in your Type A diploma course you're offering this summer. And I said, I've got all my documents ready to come in, except for the one which I'm told by the ministry is in the mail. It should be at any time to me. How many days grace can you give me? The young lady said, I'm sorry, sir, we can't give any days grace. Today is the absolute deadline. It's a very select course and uh, there's very few teachers, but uh, today. I said, oh, well, thank you very much, love, thank you. I brought to put the phone and I've got two more years of my contract at the French school to run. And she said, excuse me, sir. I said, yeah, she said, you Mr. Evans. I've heard this before. When I came back from Hong Kong, I told the story when I put my daughters into the school in Brujan. Are you Mr. Evans? I said, yes. But she said, your name's down already, Mr. Evans. I said, well, it can't be. I haven't applied. Oh, she said, Professor Carl, I'll put it down for you. I went and did that course, a very wonderful course. I thoroughly enjoyed the six weeks, made a lot of good friends. I ended up with my Type A diploma. Now, if I had not had my disappointment in Germany, if I would not met the one man in a million in the wrong place, in Toronto, I would never have got on that course and I would not have had my type A at this time. It's very relevant, I added at this time, before you see in my next story.